doors of number 8, Kurzweil Gardens, and Origin Information Room 1903, NP Harbour, Yankee Whiskey 3, received, over. Uniform Delta 1, a Uniform Delta 1, the Four Keys Public House, a corner of Smith Road and Banker Street, east of 31, a drunk, and Origin Information Room 1904, over. You're very welcome, Mr. Chapman. And a Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a Merry Christmas to you. Uniform Delta One, would you show us back on watch, please? Over. I reported we were going off. You're not down here. I've been trying to find you, MP over. We've been to a party. All right for some, isn't it? All in the line of duty. And it better be, MP out. And a very Merry Christmas to you, too. Wasn't much to ask. You told her yourself to get the trifles there by six. Well, he hadn't even started eating by then. You didn't tell her seven, did you? I didn't deal with a woman at all. You did. Bloody women's services. Now we've got to decide what to do with five bloody great bowls of trifle. Round the hospital. They'll soon gobble them up. Uniform Delta 2, a uniform Delta 2. Percy's Clothes Shop, Greek Street, East 31, a fight, ends. Origin Information Room 1928, MPR. And that's old Percy. He's got a flaming hot temper. Uniform Delta 3. Received my 1928, MP over. Any unit deal? Uniform Delta 1. Chance to atone for our sins. A wheel deal, over. All is forgiven. Show you dealing. Uniform Delta 1, MP over. Over there. I'll take a look.
I didn't want to call the police. It's just that the window was broken. I'm the last person to bring policemen. Seen too much of them round here. The way they treat those kids. I never dreamt I'd have to ring up. And I'm not complaining about kids. It was the way. Hold on, madam. Miss, thank you. I'm in, miss. Now, can we go back to what happened? Oh, God. What do you expect? All right, you two, that's enough of that. Go on. Charles, no hooligan. He went out on a simple carol singing expedition and got beaten up. That's all I know. And you're implying that he sent upon these agro merchants himself? Well, I'm you? not implying anything, madam. I'm merely asking why he refuses to say anything about what happened. That's all. We're going to have to talk to him until he tells us something. He wasn't one of them. Trust you to get it all wrong. There you are, I told you. What so. are you going to do? Charge him? I'm not talking to you, miss. You were talking to me. Yes, you were. You know some of them. I suppose you'll realise I should be at work. I was expected there an hour ago. I suggested that you should leave and we keep you informed, madam. Oh, now you want me to leave? No, I didn't say I want you to leave, madam. I suggested that if you've got work to well, do... Well, I'm not going to have you accuse my boy of doing this dreadful thing. We are not accusing anybody, Now, madam. look, while my shop is shut, I'm losing business. It's Christmas time, a maximum trading period, and I'm here. Back there, my, my, my shop is shut. I told you, we are dealing with it, Mr. Percy. Come with that oh, before. Not going to blame these boys for taking those spurs. It was the police. Will you keep quiet, Miss? Please. Look, I came here voluntarily. I should be at college, but I give up my entire education for the piece that's going to be Will you please just one. sit down? I can't do nothing. And if he says I did, he's a blimmin' liar. Wait, you don't yes, what do you want? I'm talking to you. Sorry, Inspector Rich, could we have our briefing, please? Yes, yes, yes. Be quiet, or I'll lock you up. Thank you. <clears throat> now, you'll all be dealt with in turn, so please just settle down and keep quiet. We will get to you one by one. All detailed officers to the ops room. Excuse me. boy. Well, I wasn't able to talk to him. He's been unconscious. They seem to think he might have severe brain damage. I see. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> and this division, over the past few months, violence in the streets involving children and teenagers appears to have got completely out of hand. Property's been damaged, young people have been injured, sometimes severely. Now there's a boy in hospital who might very well die as a result of head injuries received in yet another street fight. We're now going to find out who did it. Have any of those witnesses and suspects out there been questioned yet? Yes, sir. There are two you, sir. Well? Noble. They refuse to speak, sir. What do you mean, refuse to speak? They just refuse to open their mouths, sir. We've tried, the parents have tried. Storm, sir. Well, keep at them. Give them hell. Make them speak. But, All right, I'll have a go. Just a minute. Let's forget about the kids for a moment. Let's concentrate on uh, Riviera Street. Now, knock on every door. There was a fight. Someone will have seen something. Last night at 7.15, there was a fight. Sammy Palmer was kicked unconscious. Now, the party who picked him up but saw sir, nothing. it was dark, and it happened in the corner of two walls. Get back there. Come on, all of you. Riviera Street. Come on. Right. Dabs are useless. Forensics come up with nothing. They ran into the darkness. It happened. The assailants ran off. By the way, uh, A10 is due here any second. A10? A complaint? Mm -hmm. I know a man out there is a Mr. Percy. He's got a clothes shop on Grig Street. The young woman is a Miss Pascoe. She saw the fight in Grig Street. Well, later on, she looked out of a window. She saw two crewmen from Uniform Delta One take three fur coats out of Mr. Percy's shop window, stuff them in the boot of the car and drive off. This morning, Mr. Percy came round looking for his coats. No sign. Oh, no, for God's sake. Now, listen, Rich, what the hell's going on here? Get a statement from Miss Pascoe. I warn you, she's very uncooperative. Who isn't in this section? Hang on a second. I gather, then, the fight started in Greek Street, then moved over to Riviera Street. Sir, 
Miss Pasco was a witness to the first attack which took place here. The kids then dispersed and it finished up here with the kicking. That's it. Well, I'm not interested in fur coats. Leave that to A10. I want descriptions of all those kids. Right. Now, tell me, what's been going on? Your guess is as good as mine, sir. Yes? You're coming. A10, sir. No, right. I won't be long. Where's Inspector Waller? I'll give him a ring. That's the month. He was supposed to be here for the briefing. Yes, sir. I knew you'd ask me that first. You're not interested in policemen stealing coats, are you? Well, if it's relevant, then we'll talk about it. But first, perhaps you'd give me a description of these other youths. So you can round a lot more up and put them behind bars? Miss Pascoe, I've just been to the hospital and seen Sammy Palmer. He's in a very bad way. Now, will you help us find out who did that to him? I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't trust the police around here. In fact, I don't trust policemen at all. I think a man must go into the police force because of a deficiency in his character. I study psychology and I've yet to meet a policeman who has got a grave personality defect. Miss Pascoe, is that one of the boys you saw Carol singing last night? Don't shout at me, please. We have very few rights left, but I happen to know some of them. Yes, I know him. It's Sammy Palmer. Very well, then. Now, will you give me a description of the other youths? I don't know. Sorry you have such a low opinion of policemen. So am I. Very sorry indeed. Personally, I think they're as bad as the crooks. In fact, they are crooks. If they spent less time persecuting demonstrators and students and kids, and more time looking after us, you'd be the real Good morning, Waller. Uh, sorry, I'm late, sir. A couple of urgents cropped up on my matter. This is quite urgent. Oh, yes, sir, I know. All right, sit down. <coughs> Let me say what's on my mind. Last night's affray was only the culmination of two solid months of similar incidents on both your sections. Yeah, we do that. At Crickham Road, you've investigated over 50 cases of assault by youth since October. On November the 5th, it was a disgrace. Seven grievous bodily harm charges. Boy of 12, nearly burnt to death by a firework stuffed down the back of his shirt. Another one with crushed ribs. Five emergency operations from that one incident. Yes, sir. Well, what's it all about? Why this rush of violence among the kids in this area? Isn't happening in any other division. I've inquired. I am stamping on it so hard. We both are. We've had conference after conference about it. You may be stamping on it. Why is it happening? I've had 13 successful convictions. In spite of the continual refusal on the part of every suspect and witness under the age of 18 to cooperate with the police. Yeah. Youth beaten up while cleaning car. Refused to speak. Four youths attacked outside tube station. Refused to speak. Seventeen youths involved in that dust-up on the town hall steps on bonfire night. Every single one refused to speak. Now the pattern's repeating itself here. Now why? Come on, what's the game? What is the game? We've tried the schools, we've tried the parents' organisations, we've found nothing. We've told them that we've had enough and we are cracking down on it. It looks to me as if it is a deliberate, organised attempt to undermine the working of the law in this division. You might as well say it's being organised from outer space for all the evidence you've got. Well, it could be, that could be. Thirty convictions from both sections. Assault occasioning bodily harm, malicious wounding, causing an affray. Now it might well be murder. We'll get him. I don't think that's the point, is it? Yes? Do you see right here? Yes. Can we speak to him, please? Oh, no, I'm sorry, he's asleep. Uh, could you call back later? Could you wake him up, please? Are you? We're investigating officers from New Scotland Yard. What? Will you wake him up, please? Well, I... No, I won't. He's been on late turn. And we'll have to do it ourselves, won't we? You can't just push past me like this. Yeah, what's going on? They're, in... They're from the Yard. They're investigating officers. A-10. 
Eight, ten. <laughs> oh, no. I see your pocketbook, please. It won't mean anything. I haven't written it up for last night yet. Can you get dressed, please? Come down, Mr. Crickham Road Station. You mind if I make a quick phone call? Who to? A solicitor. I believe that's permitted, isn't it? All right, go on. But what's Shh. going on? Hello, Norman. They're coming for you from A10. Don't say anything. Oh, no, chummy. That was very wrong of you. kids sitting behind you. Behind me, yes. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. I wouldn't say it if I wasn't. You saw that boy throw a brick through the window. You're quite clever, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'd have to be to be as corrupt and deformed as you think I am and get away with it for all these years. I wasn't going to shop those boys. You wormed it out of me. I want to talk about fur coats. Yes, well, there's a special complaints department from the yard dealing with that. You'll have a gay old time with them. Thank you, Miss Pasco. You've been very helpful. And I can assure you that I shall be very careful about telling people how cooperative you've been. What the hell do you mean by that? Well, I'm sure you wouldn't want it to leak out that you've been actually helping the police. How would you? Not good for your image, surely. You're probably the most insufferable copper I've ever met. Well, why don't you psychoanalyze me sometime? You'll probably find that under all these layers, I'm just as pig-hearted as you are. I'll wait for these so-called complaints officers. Is it a day? Go to hell! Hi. Right. Okay. Okay. Ah. that over there? Francis Charles Pilcher and Mother. Yes, well, I'll have him next. Yes. 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 He threw the brick through the window. Oh, Inspector Waller. Um, Miss Pascoe uh, says that this one here threw the brick through the window. All right, I'll get some men round his place, have a look through his cover. Find a picture of him and get it distributed to the lads in Riviera Street. Thank you. Do you know where Mr. Kingdom is? No, I've no idea. Where can we go? PC right to the ops room, PC Griffin, cell six. This way, right. Oh, Inspector Ridge, uh, uh, do you know where Mr. Kingdom is? He went for a walk. He wants to take a look around the division. Uh, well, can I have a word with you?
Charlie Bagnister? Yeah, it's Charlie Jones. Do you want to go, mister? Uh, no, thank you. I don't think so. You want to be me? No, I'm a rotten ref. Well, if you want to make yourself useful, keep your goggles open for the flies. Flies? Blue bottles. So we're not supposed to play here. Fuzz chases us off. All right, I'll keep my goggles open then. Hey, come on, Jimmy. Just give a shout if you see an elf. Right. Coppers chase you often. Chases? It's like the Rally Olympics. Well, no friendly ones? Friendly? If you got that, if you're rich, that's what coppers are for to look after the rich people. It's logical, ain't it? What are coppers for? Is to look after property. Who's got the property? The rich people. So who does a copper look after? When did you ever see a copper chasing a knob? Well, it can happen. I oh, do that. Hey, watch it! Slave knife! Go. See what I mean? You know your Christmas thing. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> this one of mine. Are you sure about that? Of course I'm sure. Look, there's the number. I, I have a list of all the numbers. Well, you is know? it one of the ones that was in the shop window? Oh, I don't know. You see, I haven't got my list with me. I'll, well, I'll would you like to go spot. back and take a look? Yes, I'll do that. It was P.C. Griffin who took the statement from you. The second policeman that walked in, yes. And he was definitely one of the officers who put the fur coats into the boot of the car. Definitely. How about the other one? Couldn't get a close look at him. He's the other side of the road. You're really interested, are you? Well, we're interested, miss. Yes. Well, where do you get it from? No explanation, eh? You took those coats from Mr. Percy's broken shop window. Well, are you denying it? Well, are you admitting it or denying it? Now, where did that coat come from? You took it, didn't you, from the shop window? Where's Inspector Ridge? Oh, I'm from the yard, Chief Superintendent King. Oh, yes, sir. Um, he's in one of the interview rooms, I think, sir. Thank you. Well, you've got to say something sometime, so we might as well start now. Are you arresting me? Are you arresting me? Well, you've got to tell me sometime, so you might as well start now. Don't be so bloody cheeky! Yes, you're under arrest. What are you charging me with? Well, come on, he's got a charge sheet there. What are you charging me with? You saw them singing carols and then you sat on them. Why? I'm talking to you, sonny boy. You slung a brick through the window, then you ran off after Sammy Parler and you cornered him in Riviera Street. You beat the hell out of him. You kicked him. In the face. In the head. Well? Come on, you little sod. Answer the man. Answer the questions, Pilcher. You will see. Now, you are not under the age of criminal responsibility. There are witnesses to what you did. You could be put away for life. You think it's smart, buttoning up like this? Well, I'll unbutton your mouth for you. Sergeant. Take him up. I'll talk to him later. Oh, 
What are you going to do? Beat it out of him? Ah, he's right. It's the only thing they understand. Look, I was dragged out of bed at five o'clock this morning to take charge of this case. I'm a bit short of patience. Now, get out there. Tell that boy he can have a solicitor. Yes, sir. He has every right to say no. I'm sorry, Mr. It is not an ordinary situation. I warned you of that. How many parks and recreation grounds are there in this borough? Oh, don't start that. You sound like a lefty welfare officer. You know who you're talking to. Sorry, sir. Want to know what you sound like? Stamp on them, chase them, bully them. No, that's not our policy at all. Take a walk around your own manor. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. This upsurge of violence reached its first peak at the end of October, levelled off in mid-November, and has come up again now, ten days before Christmas. Yes. Does that mean anything to you? Yes. Period before Christmas, the period before Guy Fawkes. Two very English festivities. Carl Singer's attacked, Penny for the Guy Kids assaulted. A robbery, of course. Pennies, small change, silver, no breaking and entering, no houses, shops, stores, just kids on the street. Yeah, well, what else? Well, I say protection. I say organised. Well, that's a possibility. I had thought of that, of course, but I've been scruffy kids. And then there's this conspiracy of silence now. Oh, ah, yes. Talking of conspiracies of silence, so, coffee? Aye. Right. You were going to tell me about PC Wright. Oh, well, that's our own internal affair, sir. Oh, no, it's not. Now, that is theft. The suspects are police officers. It took place less than 200 yards away from where a boy was nearly kicked to death. You mean Wright could have organised that diversion in order to get away with the coats? Tell me about Wright. Oh, well, no. He was transferred here from Tom Wallace's section. I didn't uh, want him here. He was transferred because he was getting too big for his boots. But Divisional HQ recommended that he should stay. Friends in high places? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, even when he was in foot patrol, he was never reliable. He'd spend hours, as he claimed, having cups of tea with people, doing turns for charity fates. He became a kind of local celebrity. Well, he still is, in fact. He used to lecture Tom Waller on how to run Kemba Green, CID. He was starting an elite and completely destroying morale in Tom's section. And he's been caught with stuff in his car before. Now, we've had our eyes on him. Yes. Yes, he could have ingratiated himself with those kids. Oh, I didn't suggest that. You did. Okay. Looking for Sergeant Ward. Oh, he left about a quarter of an hour ago. Hello, mister. They got you too. Hello, Jimmy. Yes, I'm afraid they got me too. What's he for? He's been identified as one of the carol singers last night. Take him a number two. Uh, there's only his mother. She's at work. She has been contacted, sir. So. Oh, Jimmy, I'm afraid I'm a police officer. You're a fly. I'm afraid so. This is Chief Sawright. Right. When am I going to stop trusting people? I'm sorry. You're sorry. Uh, Jimmy, there were one or two things I wanted to talk I'm to you about. I'm not saying nothing to nobody. You are nobody. All right, you needn't. I'll support you. All I ask is that you listen to what I have to say. You see, I'm very worried about poor old Sammy Palmer. He may not live, you know, Jim. He's in a very bad way. You know, he's the only kid the Palmers have got. You know them, don't you, the Palmers? Went to see them this morning. Yep. Sammy's their only boy. That's a terrible thing, isn't it? Of course, it may have been an accident. In that case, the bloke who did it hasn't got much to worry about. But if he did it on purpose because he's vicious, and I don't want to see him get away with it, for the Palmer's sake and for yours, because then we all stand a chance of getting our faces kicked in, don't we? Eh, well, you were telling me about logic. That's logical, isn't it? Unless you get the really vicious ones. They'll make life hell for all of us. It's all right for you. Yes, it's all right for me. You live in those buildings, don't you? Yes, sir. I don't have to go back there tonight. I've got a nice little house with dry walls, central heating. I've got a job and a pension. He's not going to kick my head in. I'm not the one who's afraid to talk in case Frankie Pilcher 
comes at me with his big, ugly boots. And if we're talking about coppers... If we're talking about coppers, Jimmy, I mean, I agree with you. The more people own, the more they have to protect. Our job is to protect what they own, so the people who have nothing get the raw end of the deal. But look at it this way. I mean, we're just doing the job we're told to do. It's not our fault. Well, why did you join the flies, then, if you didn't like doing it? Oh, no, I didn't say I didn't enjoy doing it. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll give you the answer to why I joined... If you would tell me why you're going around getting yourself beaten up. Oh, no. Look, you're talking to the wrong geezer, mister. I don't think I am, because we're both on the same side. And it's not Frankie Pilcher's side. We're with Sammy Palmer and his mum and dad, aren't we? All right, Jimmy, look. Suppose you can't talk to me. I bet there is a way, isn't there? There's a way you can let me know without talking, without actually telling me anything. So no one will ever know you told me. You can go whenever you like. Look, so, I'm sorry, ladies. You'll have to wait a bit longer. You'll have to be patient. Patient? I'm sorry. I don't be here three hours. Well, give him a couple of minutes. Now, ladies, please. Three hours. Three hours. Three hours. Now, Mr. Percy's just run from his shop. The coat's not stolen. P.C. Wright bought it quite legitimately for his wife two months ago. He only had to say that. I know. But what is this? Some sort of a madhouse? Mr. Grisworthy. Worthy Blandford, 28 Sir Ryan Street, East 31. Yeah. Blandford Graceworthy. Do it yourself. Wallpaper's delivered within 24 hours of order. Wallpaper? Yeah, yeah. I'll just off Greek Street. Graceworthy, do it yourself. Can I help you? Uh, may I speak to Mr. Graceworthy, please? Graceworthy speaking. Now, Mr. Graceworthy, I'm Chief Superintendent Kingdom uh, from New Scotland Yard. I'm making inquiries about an incident last night in Riviera Street involving a Sammy certain... Sammy Palmer. Oh, yes. Nasty business. I was wondering whether to come round and see the police about that. Really? How is poor Sammy? I've not been able to get round to the hospital. He's not well at all. Now, could you come round to Crickham Road Police Station at once? I'm here. Uh, yes, of course I will, naturally. I'll shoot round this moment. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Graceworthy. Mm -hmm. What's your connection with Sammy Palmer? He's one of my lads. Now, hold on. Don't go away. I'll be with you in a jiff. Sammy Palmer's one of his lads. He'll be with us in a jiff. Yes. Excuse me, sir. P.C. Wright's made a request to speak to you, sir. To me? Yes. All right, bring him in. Oh, Sammy Wright. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Yes? You're from New Scotland, the answer? Yes. Permission to talk to you, please, sir. All right, you're talking. No, sir. I'd prefer these gentlemen to hear what I have to say, if you don't mind. I would like to hear you right. It's about time you opened your mouth. Is it? Yeah. Very well, then. Inspector Waller, you'll find three fur coats at Kemba Green Police Station. Your section, sir, where they were taken at about 0200 by myself and Police Constable Griffin. If you care to use the phone, sir, you'll find that the station sergeant docketed them and entered them in the book. You took them into Kemba Green? Yes, sir. Now, why did you take them in there? Mr. Percy's shop is in Kemba Green section, sir. I beg your pardon, it is not. It is. Just. Half of Greek Street is in Kemba Green, the other half is in Crickham Road. Mr. Percy's is the last shop in Kemba Green. P.C. Griffin and myself were very particular, sir. We looked for the key holder, Mr. Percy, to look after his own premises, but we couldn't find him. Of course, we should have had the window boarded up and left the stuff in there, but it was easier this way. 
It's a showcase window, sir. No chance of a further breaking. So why leave a PC standing there all night in this weather? Now, why the hell haven't you spoken about this before? I was waiting, sir. What were you waiting for, Constable? I hope you can see what's happened here, sir. I've been jumped on. Nobody's bothered to check. I've been accused of all sorts of things, including petty larceny, but they couldn't get me. This time they thought this is it. And why didn't did you bother take to it there? check? Well, it's in your section, Mr. Waller. Not one of you, including Inspector Panther and Sergeant Lilly, bothered to check. It must be PC, right? Just a phone call, that's all, to check. Just a squint at a map. How was Mr. Percy to know this isn't his local station? It's the nearest? Mr. Percy wouldn't know. You should. Look, this is not my affair. You wanted to talk to me, now what about? I would like you to know this, sir. I'm about to lay a complaint. I'm laying complaints against Sergeant Lilly, Inspector Panther and Inspector Ridge. They include the following. Wrongful arrest, forcibly entering my house without a warrant, taking away a fur coat, which is my property, and assaulting my wife. You're mad. They pushed past her. You only had to look at that map. I still don't know why you're talking to me about it. Well, I understand you're investigating a serious assault here, sir. Well, we've been investigating these assaults for weeks now, and we've been told to give these kids hell. Is that true? Not the way he says Any it. kid we see who looks dirty or bored or cheeky or down at ill, we stop and question. And we don't stand no nonsense. It's terror tactics. It's nonsense. I've told you time after time that the only way you can get these people's confidence is to show them that you care about how they live. Oh, we don't want to hear about your I'd theory. I'd like to hear it. But, sir, that's not the point. Go on. This is what I've been trying to do. This is what they don't like. Why Inspector Waller put in for my transfer. I tried to get the town all interested in these kids. I tried to raise funds for a disco for them. I've been oh, we to their own. Yeah, and I'll give a toss about what's obviously a breach of discipline. If the boys from A10 really searched my flat this morning, they would have found five bowls of trifle from an old people's Christmas party that I was taking to the hospital. It's Christmas. It's going to be cold. And a lot of old people are poor and are going to die. So I organised this party for Five them. bowls of trifle? Yes. Is it Mr. Grace worthy to see you, sir? I'll be right there. In the first place, whatever complaints you have about your senior officers are matters for you to follow up according to the correct rules of procedure. I've been persecuted both at Kemba Green and Crickham Road for my views. I've no comment to make on that. I will take into consideration your remarks on divisional methods if they have any bearing on the assault on Sammy Palmer. But I don't think they're going to help me to find out who kicked him. See, what you've forgotten, Constable, is one of the first rules in the handbook. A police officer should never get personally involved. Property, dogs and women, remember? Although, come to think of it, I don't recall it mentions anything about old people and kids. Ah, Mr. Graceworthy. Lanford. Graceworthy. Ah, oh, kingdom. Uh, sit down, please. Ah. Now, I believe you can help me. You said that Sammy Palmer was one of your boys. Now, what did you mean by that? He was one of my singers. What singers? Carol singers. One of your carol singers? Oh, yes. I have five groups of carol singers. Ah, oh, you're a charity organiser? No. Then what do you mean, one of your carol singers? <laughs> oh, dear. Well... I employ them, you see. You employ carol singers? I do. I give them choir practice. I'm a bit skilled at that. They really do sing beautifully. Have you heard them? I see. These boys go around the streets singing carols and they give you the money they collect. That's right, yes. What do they get out of it? Two pounds a week. Each? Hmm? How many of them are there? Fifty regulars. Part-time, of course. Evenings, school holidays. How much do you get out of it? Well, uh, a fair profit. I mean, there's the cost of uh, professional pianist, rehearsal rooms, How refreshments. Much? Well, I suppose something in the region of 60, 70 pounds a week. 60? Well, it's a matter of good business methods. If you offer the public an exceptional product, they'll pay for it. Sometimes the boys take as much as a pound a time at a doorstep. I mean, you've got to hear them. They sing like angels. Am I right in thinking that these boys have uh, other jobs as well? They're... Did you employ them to collect pennies for the guy? Oh, not pennies. Fifty p's and pound notes. Not the old days, you see, where you just stuff an old jacket with newspaper and collect bits and pieces for it. Oh, no. These are beautiful guys. 
They all light up. They're papier mache. They have real smoke coming out of the pipes. They're masterpieces. And when they're not doing this, your boys are cutting lawns, trimming hedges, cleaning cars. Yes, all that. Yes. And uh, Sammy Palmer was one of your regulars. Poor little Sammy. Yes. What does Jimmy Lampard do? Oh, Jimmy. He's a collector. Oh, the other boys don't collect money, but Jimmy does. I see. Uh, how much does he get? A fiver. He's also one of our lookout lads. What do they do? They protect our pitches. Who from, Mr. Graceworthy? From interlopers. Like Frankie Pilcher? Ah, oh, you know about him. In other words, you employ one group of strong-arm kids to protect your boys from other strong-arm kids like Frankie Pilcher. Absolute nonsense, this word, strong-arm. And I suppose your kids pinch those pitches from the other kids in the first place. Oh, no, no, there were strict rules laid down. Yeah, rules like keep your mouth shut if you end up in court. Well, they're very loyal chaps. It's gang warfare. And you're behind it. Or didn't you now? Well, I suppose it does get a bit out of hand sometimes. A bit out of hand? You've had this division in a continual state of siege since October. Look, I started this last March. It was all very peaceful till we ran into Pilcher's bonfire crowd in October. They started pinching our lads' collections, you see. I take care of the blokes if they do land up in court. They get an extra tenor. What? Uh, in Inspector. Chief Superintendent. Yes, Superintendent. I admit that what started off as a social gesture to this neighbourhood has gone a bit haywire. Gone a bit haywire. There's a boy in hospital who might not live. Yes, I know. That is unforgivable. But I never intended all this. You see, my father had a very successful wallpaper business here. He took a lot out of this borough, and bless him, he did encourage me to have a strong social conscience. I wanted to put something back. As you know, these kids live in appalling surroundings, nowhere to play. I wanted to help them by training their voices, by teaching them how to excel, by giving them a pride in their work. By robbing them of what was their due. No, 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 by taking them off the streets. You've done nothing but put them on the streets. No. Why didn't you report it to the police when you first discovered that your boys were moving in on other kids' pitches? Because you knew that would be the end of your little racket, didn't you? Why didn't you come to us this morning when you first heard about Sammy? I know, I've been upset all day. Look, I'll see that Sam is all right. I'll take care of his... Oh, nerves. shut up! I really am not an evil person, you know, Superintendent. No. I know your kind very well. It's people like you who start wars. Yes? Right. Don't go away. this old lady, sir, and Mrs. Harper. She witnessed the whole thing from her basement window. She's bedridden, but she was able to identify Frankie Pilcher from his picture. She opened his mouth in? No. Like he swallowed glue. Have you got enough to charge him? Oh, yes, sir. Right, then charge him. Uh, Tom, oh, hang on a second. Uh, I'd like a word. Thank you. We've got a character in there called... Uh, Lanford Graceworthy. Now, I don't know if he's real or just a figment of my imagination. I might have dreamed him up. You might go in there and find nobody. What did he say, sir? Uh, you see him. Uh, maybe I dreamed the whole thing up. PC Wright, fur coats, Frankie Pilcher, Jimmy Lampard, and you two. What was that, about five bowls of trifle? Uh, well, that is a delicate situation, sir. Yes, isn't it? Well, if you want my opinion, and I presume you don't, it's not just a question of the complete breakdown of communication between the constabulary of both your sections and the people they're supposed to serve. Now, just a minute, sir. To victimise Wright for his views was unforgivable. But you don't know what that man was trying to do. actively encourage the majority of officers here to persecute a minority. Well, you've got to understand the kind no of... No wonder no one will give you evidence. Kids here regard the local copper as some sort of a monster. Oh, well. Not my affair, I suppose. No, it is not. Well, you've got two more prosecutions out there. You've got a kid in hospital in a serious condition with possible reprisals, and you've got complaints against you by two junior officers. I leave it with you. 
Thanks. Good luck, gentlemen. Shopping for. I want to get out of this place as quickly as possible. Yes, well, I won't be a moment. I've got a date with my psychoanalyst. Huh? This is Greg Street, I've just realized. You yes. don't mind, do you? Hello, who is it? Miss Pascoe? Yes, who is it? Uh, Detective Sergeant Ward. Oh, is it? What do you want? Can I see you for a moment? No, you can't. I'm busy. It's about the fur coats. I suppose you're going to tell me those coppers didn't take them. That's right. Well, why don't you just buzz off and chase a few kids? There was a mistake. It always is. Can I talk to you? You're talking. We had a date. I don't remember that. You were going to psychoanalyze me. A personality deficiency. Oh, yes. Well, Mr. Graceworthy's not stamping your card anymore, so that's all yours. <laughs> A quid? Worth every penny. Come on, it's your turn. What? On my wages? <laughs> well, thank you, Jimmy. Merry Christmas. Same to you, mister. Here's Simon. Oh, I think it's going to be all right. Great. Hey, mister, yeah. we had a bargain. You was going to tell me something. Sorry? Yeah. Like why you joined the fuzz in the first place. Ah, yes. Uh, I like the uniform. Is that all? Straight up. Oh, get your date. Uh -huh. Wednesday night, her place. <laughs> she said I'm one of the most promising nutcases she's ever met. She's a good judge. 